Good evening and welcome to the NDTV Dialogues, a program where we focus on ideas, ideas and issues central to our public discourse. You may not hear it in political rhetoric, but these really are the ideas which are going to shape India as we go ahead and especially in 2014. Tonight, governance is the new buzzword. We are seeing the Aam Aadmi style of governance which seems to be shaking up the corridors of power, many other different styles of governance on offer and which will be central to this election. Joining me tonight, I'm joined by Delhi's new law minister, Somnath Bharti. I'm joined by Mr. Ujjal Dosanj, Mr. Arshandra Shekhar and Mr. Srivatsa Krishna. Thank you all very much for coming in. Mr. Bharti, well, uh, welcome to the world of governance. It's been about a week, 10 days now. What's been your biggest learning experience? Because many of the ideas have been interesting. You're planning an assembly session in Ramdila Maidan. Uh, you've announced the subsidies you had promised or the free uh, water up to 700 litres. What's been your biggest experience of governance in these 10 days? See, uh, the day I took over, uh, for the first two days I called meetings of all the four departments. And I was shocked to see, I was shocked to know, I was shocked to be told that there is no policy document. There is no policy document to run the department. Now, if there is no policy document, there is no mission statement, there, is, there are no achievable targets, there is no roadmap available, how do I run the department? What have we achieved? What was what, what supposed to be achieved? It's all a mess. Mm -hmm. So I was shocked. And I asked the officers, that, what, then uh, how do we run the department? They said, they said sir, the, the, the way minister wants, we, we all do. The, the, the way you say, I'll do. I said, this is absolutely stupid and shocking. I today, I'm only a custodian of the interest of the people of Delhi for five years, let's say, for example. So whatever I do should be continued. Whatever previous governments have done should be continued in the good, good interest, good faith. So that's, that's the first biggest learning I had. Then I learned second thing, that there are a lot many officers who were feeling suffocated in the previous regimes for, 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 for being honest. So they now feel a great breathing space. They can implement, they can speak up their mind. And I've told them, again in the free hand. I said two of two objectives. One, the poorest of the poor must be prioritized. Mm -hmm. Second, because you see, poorest of the poor doesn't mean that I'm neglecting the, the wealthy and the rich and the, the, the people in the upper strata. Because poorest of the poor, the moment you push them, everybody gets pushed further. Because they're the last in the line. All right? Second is that every penny spent by the government has to be accounted for. These two objectives. And that's we must have read in the newspapers also. Now, that's how... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm starting my day 6 morning and then go till 11 o'clock night. Throughout the day, I'm busy, busy. How would, you, how would you answer critics who say that the problem is that you all have come into power, but you all don't know the first thing about governance. You had people who criticized you for that decision or for saying that you wanted to summon judges uh, to, come and, uh, to come to a meeting. But other questions also, uh, controversy or proposals like 90% reservation in the Delhi University. Worries about whether the actual uh, power, but whether questions raised about power subsidies or bring on the power tariff will actually end up costing Delhi much more than you had planned. See, I'll, I'll let me uh, answer my, my department mm -hmm. concern that nine, uh, summoning judges, this, this is out of question. We are there to strengthen the independence of the judiciary to the best possible uh, you know, limit. Uh, they are sacrosanct, judiciary is sacrosanct. If you look at the past, judiciary has almost played an ad administrative role, which was the duty of the government. So <laughs> judiciary should not be touched. I, my statement has been misquoted and has been uh, sort of uh, you know, uh, no given matter. a shape and, uh, and, and, and a form uh, of a different nature. Uh, my intention would never be to touch judiciary. My intention was to understand that what, in what all ways the Delhi government as a law minister I can do for the judiciary to em further empower them to ensure the two. Poorest of the poor should be given justice, every penny should be counted for. That, yes. that all was my message in that. See, we are doing too many things that, uh, uh, you know, we, 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 are, we, are, we are being seen in hurry, but that's not the case. I, my understanding is probably the previous governments were too slow. That's what, this should be the speed of the, of the governance. Mm -hmm. If you look at the Bittis, the Bittis were here to rule over. So the paradigm shift from ruling over to good governance has never been the focus of the government. And you said Patchwork. that. work. You said that's what you're aiming to do. We'll come back to some of the specific proposals. Mr. Chandrasekhar, as somebody who's been in government, of course, you've been former telecom secretary, been in different branches of the government, and now heading NASCOM, so a very different role. What do you see as defining good governance? We're seeing very different models being debated now. What do you see as defining good governance, and where do you think India has lacked so far? What is the kind of governance we need to look for? 
I think the uh, fundamental uh, principle of good governance in a democratic uh, setup is to always be doing the things which are good for the majority of the people. Many of the decisions in the public space are such that they do not always do good to everybody, they do good to most of the people, but there are some winners and some losers. So, that is a balance which has to be struck in most of the decisions which are taken. Now, there are two important parts to this uh, uh, whole process and that is system has to be able to take the decisions and move on without having to constantly look over its shoulder. So, there has to be a certain element of trust <coughs> between the people who are being governed and the system of government. I think at the end of the day at every level a certain amount of trust is required. We have today perhaps reached a uh, low point in terms of that trust. Now, it is true that many things may have happened which warranted a loss of trust. I am not saying that you know this has happened in a vacuum or it has happened without any the scrapping provocation. of 122 telecom licenses. Yes. So, the, the fact is that uh, how do you bring in an element of trust in an atmosphere of mistrust is the challenge which is facing governance in India today. And I think that a key part of this whole uh, exercise of giving good governance is to not only be able to take decisions which are well uh, weighed in terms of the balance of uh, interests and the balance of benefits to a majority of the people, but most importantly to be able to communicate that decision. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a very fundamental part. Why are you taking a particular decision? Why is it that a large number of people are benefiting? And why is it that the people who are losing should not think that the government is out there to hurt them or for some other uh, you know uh, nefarious purpose. Mm -hmm. So, I think that if this is done, then you can actually get people to support what is what is being done, because without that support implementing those decisions even if they are taken becomes extremely difficult. Having said that, I think there is a problem even as far as communication is concerned, because today the nature of communication has changed. The intensity of communication, the number of channels of communication, the spread of communication has undergone a dramatic change in the last couple of decades uh, in India and everywhere in the world. So, the speed with which people are able to communicate amongst themselves is now outpaced uh, not just the speed with which government is able to uh, communicate, but also it has increased the mismatch between the sort of ponderous pace at which government works and the pace at which people are able to critique it. 